Hey, Luke, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Yeah. You ready to hang out? Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's hang out. Uh, so this is the Hanging with the Guys podcast. It is. Or show, if you're watching. What's up? The official podcast of the Android Guys. Yeah. Uh, so coming up on this episode, we will unbox a couple of things. Yep. And we'll also review a couple of things. Yep. And then we'll just have some general discussion. Yeah. So we will uh, jump into some of those here in just a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been going on, man? Not much. Uh, I got a book for Christmas. I've been reading it. It is, uh, it's called The Daily Stoic. Okay. And it is a, I mean, I guess the best way to say it's a devotional, but it's, it feels weird, you know, to say devotional because I always associate that with like a religious thing. Mm-hmm. And this is more of just a maybe a self help book, daily mm-hmm. self help. Um, so it's it's there's 365 entries, one for every day of the year, and um, all it is is a quote from a uh, famous Stoic um, from history, and then just kind of a little blurb about uh, you know maybe how that quote can help you in um, kind of being mindful or training yourself mm-hmm. to be more uh, in the like stoic philosophy, which is basically um, a, a focus on ethics and uh, virtues and knowing what you can control and how you react to the things that happen um, versus uh, just trying to control things that are outside of your scope of influence. Okay. Um and it's been pretty cool. It's been a, it's a interesting experience of doing like a daily thing. Have um, you done it pretty much? I have. Day? Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I've skipped a couple days and, you know, I'll just read two for a day then to catch yeah. up. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. It's a, uh, it's hard. It's been hard to get into that rhythm yeah. of doing something every day. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a good habit former of of good habits. I, I have bad <laughs> habits, but um, I'm trying to be, you know, more mindful or, you know, mm-hmm. you know, new year, new start off on, you know, trying to make some things. Some might happen. say new year, new you. Yeah, I guess. I, but I'm still going to be me. <laughs> I, I hate that. I know. I hate it. Um, what has it have you learned anything in terms of like just a simple like whoa i never even thought of that or not never had that I perspective mean, just the whole uh stoic mindset is it's very much i think the reason i'm drawn to it is it's very um straightforward very applicable very yeah. um makes a lot of practical sense of just only focus on what you actually can control and um you know don't don't uh don't cry yourself over spilled milk kind of thing mm-hmm. like it's it's a you know if somebody's being i can control how i react to somebody mm-hmm. i can't control how they act to me right. right um and that's one of those things that you say that and you're like uh, obvious yeah easier said than done exactly but to think of that i guess the whole mindfulness part of it is of keeping it in my mind of hey you know what I I can't control that this guy cut me off. Right. I can control uh you know maybe getting away from him so he's not or a dangerous give driver. Him the thumbs up. Right, yeah. So like up. hey you're doing great man. <laughs> hey you probably have your own things going on. I understand. It's a crazy world. We're all here together. <laughs> yeah. Uh that's cool man. Yeah. I, I I like the idea of mindfulness and working on things that Maybe you don't realize, yeah, or don't um you just kind of take for granted just some of the things that we do as a human, yeah, and as a, a parent, an adult, as a mm-hmm. male, as all these things that it, once you've kind of become mindful of some of those and you change your perspective and you understand that other people are other they're just people, right? You know, there's just so many little things that you're not taught as a kid, right? You have to kind of go through as an adult and i'm you know i've uh 
I've got a therapist that I've you know been seeing for just about a year now, and it's just interesting to have for me it was kind of like um having somebody who's able to kind of just like flick the light on in a room sure and i can kind of like look around and see all of my things Mm -hmm. and he's not there to kind of like point at anything but just being aware that some of that stuff exists Mm -hmm. and to just kind of look at that and go you know what yeah i i'm probably the only person that thinks about this Mm -hmm. i need to just let this go Mm -hmm. um this is something that still shapes me and informs my decisions and but not for the good. Right. So I, I need to just kind of figure out how to deal with that. And for me, it was kind of like, um, I think the description I'd used before was somebody else was like going into a basement and having like all these cold case files mm. and boxes sure, and pulling one off the shelf and looking at it and going, okay, yep, that's, that's closed. There's nothing we can do about that. Let's just forget about it. Right. And just, some of that stuff, being able to just kind of give it a Viking funeral, burn yeah. it and let it go. And then the other stuff is, oh, okay, yeah, I'm still working on that. That's okay. Let's keep that here. Right. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I like the idea of, like, devotional things. Sure. Um, I've got one that I read each day that, you know, goes through segments of, you know, being a parent, being a, a, a leader, being a, a husband and all mm-hmm. these things. So you'll get into that. Yeah. I think that. If it's just something, is it just one page yeah, per day? Yeah, it's just, it's a real easy, not a lot of buy-in. And that's what I was looking for to kind of get, yeah. you know, step into. That's cool, Something man. like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, How about for you? Anything new and exciting? Well, you were talking about Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I think we both got Lego sets. Yeah, we did. And I put one together. Yeah. And uh, it's, I, I should bring it here to the office. It is uh, the first set that I've done through like the uh botanical oh yeah Lego sets, uh-huh. and it's the bird of paradise cool and my wife loves to get me lego yeah. sets but she hates to watch me put them together sometimes because i'm just like once i'm in it I'm yeah in it yeah and she'll come into the kitchen or downstairs and oh you're just about done right like, all that money and you're done in three hours right. or six hours it's like no oh. There's other things here than just putting this together. Yeah. And seeing what goes into, like, even the vase. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're all done, you basically pour in the, the single pieces and it becomes the dirt or whatever. But to to build the, the vase. Yeah. And you see all the little things that go into it. Yeah. You don't appreciate it unless you build it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's the same thing, like, with the X-Wing or... Uh-huh. BB-8 and some of those around here yep. that you don't know what's going on inside. And you yeah. see how the mechanics work. And a lot of the stuff to have moving parts yep. is kind of like, man, this is just really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, yeah, I, I need to bring that in here because you can move the leaves and the, the flowers, but they're also designed so that they can, if there's like a breeze in the room, mm-hmm. they're supposed to kind of like respond like a natural plant. Really? There's like a, just a little bit of play to them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. That is really cool. Lego is a love language for oh, me. Oh, dude, I love it. Um, I got, yeah, you said I. we both got sets. I got a Fender uh, Stratocaster mm-hmm. set. And it's, it's, you know, maybe a foot, foot and a half tall. It's not a big Stratocaster, but... It's the full guitar and an amp, and just like you said, with unless you put it together, you don't really appreciate the details that they that Lego puts into it. Mm-hmm. This amp, there's a section that has all of the circuit board and components, and you put it together, expecting like, oh, this will be a part that people see. Like, no, nobody sees it. You just put the lid back over it, and then <laughs> yeah. there's also like a. Um, reverb spring coil in there and all of this stuff that is like um it, re- it makes it more real realistic yeah to what the amp components are but it serves no function in the actual perceived design right for people yeah. if they look at it um but it's those things that they put in that are like oh yeah it's like rewarding you while you're putting it together do you ever 
go to a store and see like these giant Lego, like a Statue of Liberty. Do you yeah. wonder if the inside of that is built the same way? Yes. I do too. Yeah. I, I see that. And I'm like, hmm. I wonder if that's intricate. Is there like a staircase in there because that's what it is in right. the real statue? Like, Or is it just a solid block of right. green? Yeah. Pieces? Or is it just a facade? Yeah. You know, like it would be, it'd be interesting to see that. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that show. Did you ever watch that Lego show with Will yes. Arnett? Yeah, my wife and I watched that. I thought that was so cool. I am um, I love that show and just some of those like competition shows. Mm-hmm. I'm lukewarm on some. Sure. Uh, not everything appeals to me. Uh, the Lego Master one does. I, I like that. And uh, that was a fun discovery when the pandemic first started for us. Yeah. So... Hard to believe two seasons have already aired. It's crazy. You know, and like coming up on, you know, not that long from the anniversary of the first season. So I don't know if a third one's already in the books or what. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, the time of year where I I tend to watch a lot of TV just because it's just so stupid cold. I know, dude. And it gets dark easy. Yep. And and not easy, but quick. Quick. Early. Well, I I wanted to say... I guess I say easy because it's just always gray. Yeah. And just like clouds move in out yep. of nowhere. And it's just like, oh, it's just a gray day. Like, Which is, you know, 80% of the days here in Ohio. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It, so I, I tend to um, go through cycles of going home. And then if I know I'm not doing anything, it's like, man, I know it's like seven. Do I want to put my pajamas on already? Right. Am I taking a shower immediately after dinner and am I done? Right. I, in the summer, it's like, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm still sure. going to go work in the driveway or I can finish mowing and all these things after dinner. So I, uh, I love that it affords me the chance to watch stuff, but I also kind of hate sure. like the laziness factor of it. Yeah. But I've been, I've been plenty lazy lately. <laughs> I've watched, uh, <clears throat> I watched a show on Paramount Plus the other day. Yeah. The mayor of Kingstown. Oh, right. Yeah. Jeremy Renner. Yep. I've watched a couple episodes. What do you think of that? Uh, it's really, I like it so far. It's um, it's a slow burn, it feels like. <laughs> it, it, Excuse me. I, I don't know really what to expect. I don't quite know yet what I think the type of show is going to involve, like evolve into. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a interesting premise of the idea of, you know, his, his job is facilitating, um, deals between prisons and prisoners and people inside and outside gangs outside and all this stuff in order, you know, for what he says is to keep the peace. Yeah. Um, and the idea that, you know, these guys really don't make much money on their own kind of thing. It's it's a very interesting idea for a show. Um, and I yeah, I don't I don't quite know if I love it yet, but I'm enjoying it so far. I just finished it last night mm-hmm. and I like it. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of things that by the end of the season I was just kinda like, Man, I think I've seen this one or two times too much. Sure. Or um I would have liked to have seen more of this and less of that. Right. So it's, I think it's a good, good show. I don't know where, I mean, there's lots of ways it can go from here. Yeah. Uh, Is I it just one season right now? So far. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know statistics on whether or not it's doing well. Right. Yeah. It's on Paramount Plus. So that's, you know, gaining traction as mm-hmm. a streaming platform and, I think if you have regular cable, you have access to Paramount Plus through logging in, I think, you know, through yeah. provider. But um, there's not a lot of shows that I see and go, oh, that's where everybody's going to watch this show. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is uh, Star Trek Discovery. Mm-hmm. You know, that was real popular a couple of years ago, but I haven't really heard about it much in the last year or two. Um, but it's still on there yeah. and, uh, yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see 
because of you know the cast and and you know the writer it, yeah it has the ability to stay but who knows with you know how ratings go and traction um if, i wonder if it, it, it i feel like it could be one of the shows where it gets picked up again Maybe another time, but it just gets canceled before they're able to completely resolve stuff. Sure. I feel like that the show so far feels like it has that potential. Right. Where it's like, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good word of mouth. And then nah, just not quite enough for us to merit producing another season. Right. But but that's how I feel about the show Blue Bloods, too. Man, let me and tell you And that's like I can't nine or ten seasons now. Do you watch it? I've watched it before, and it's it's fine. So that is, for me at least, my account algorithm. I don't know if it is the same mm-hmm. for you. I see ads for that yeah. on Paramount Plus like crazy. All the time. It's the same ad the entire time I watched mm-hmm. the show, <clears throat> and it was so... It was it got to be so corny. I was like, man, I will never watch this show. Mm-hmm. And I wonder. I was like, I don't know anybody that watches this show... It's not bad. I watched like the first three seasons um, and it it was it's a pretty like wholesome family kind of show. Yeah. Like the the family is is all about trying to to do the right thing. I didn't realize there was that much. That's what this ad has been like these people sitting around a table having this just it's a brief a family dinner. Yeah. But it was just kind of like, is that really what the show, like it balances that? Yeah. They always have like a Sunday lunch, but it's like, you know, it's Tom Selleck and, uh, uh, Donnie Wahlberg, Wahlberg yeah. and, you know, a handful of other actors that I can't grab their names right now, but you've seen them in other things. The cast is good. And, you know, it's one of those that like, as it gets into season nine or 10 or whatever it is now, it's like, what more story is there? What more situations can these people be put in? You know, it, yeah. it's the any kind of procedural like that's based around a uh, existing profession. Just how many different, you know, things can be thrown at the person before it's like, all right, it's the same. Just, yeah. Yeah. This is just completely out of the realm of believable that one person is the center of all of this. Right. I don't know what it is, but police procedurals, hospital shows, um, detective shows, like they just all seem to be, they must work. And they yeah. all seem to be Chicago, New York, or San Francisco. Right. Well, I think you pick the biggest cities because that gives you the most variety of things that might happen. That's a good point. But it's like... How many times can you ask somebody to start watching a new show of some doctor in a hospital in New York that's going to do things his way. And yeah, they're all kind of the same, right? Right. They all feel like this. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't care what I'm watching. It's just this is another one that it. You know, a good looking doctor. Yeah. Is, you know. Yeah. Being a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. I know. Um. Yeah. So I've. Uh, the only other thing I could think of here was. Um, Righteous Gemstones. Oh my just gosh! Came back. What a great show! Ridiculous, I think, is the best word. Yeah, for it. it's it, definitely not for everybody. No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but if you are a fan of Eastbound and Down, yep, just Danny McBride in general, yep, um, Vice Principals, it's a lot of the same characters, yeah, same actors yep. playing riffs on those characters, yep, but. Man, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's giggle a, funny it's kind of ir- stuff. Irreverent. Yeah. It's over the top. It's uh, it's crude. It's brash. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's it's it's a lot. It's not for you know the faint of heart. If you're if you're easily offended, don't watch the show. Yeah. Well, and the and whole it, thing is it's around centered, the premise of like a family, like a mega church. Yeah. Kind of idea. So that in itself is going to offend. It's people. polarizing. Because you see, like right away, that it's like, oh, these guys don't all live. No, the way it's they that's preach. just they don't practice income. Yeah, it's yeah. just a job for yeah. them, and that you know, yeah, it's. Uh, but man, that show is hilarious. Yeah, I just caught 
first episode of season two, mm -hmm. and uh, I have the other one ready to go. Yep. When I get home. Oh man. Uh, I'm really curious. <clears throat> excuse me to see how Eric Andre plays on that show. Yeah. Because he was so ridiculous in the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> and just the idea <laughs> of him uh just in that role yeah because man he's he is another thing <clears throat> excuse me that's just he's not for everybody yeah if you get his humor you can't describe it well i think that's what everybody in that show is mm -hmm. you know they're all like the fringe of comedy i can see a lot of people that don't watch a show going, why is this funny to you? Mm -hmm. This is stupid. Yeah. You know, but it it is. It's, it is it's stupid. The, it's it's stupid best, funny. Yeah, it's, it's the best stupid. I, I've had to pause the show a couple of times <laughs> because I know I'm just going to laugh right over the, the next scene. Right. And yeah, it's, I'm, I love it. Um, la last thing that comes to mind, we can move on to, uh, unboxing is, uh, the power, excuse me, the power of the dog. Oh yeah, okay. With, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, and um, Kirsten Dunst, mm -hmm. Jesse Plemons. A lot of good people in this. It it. Have you seen it yet? I haven't seen it. No. I want. Well, as soon as I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, I, that looks like the kind of trailer that's catering to a uh, like best actor nomination sure. kind of thing, and it's like seeing him. Cumberbatch in this role that's completely different than anything else he's played. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I really need to see this. And then like a few weeks have gone by. I did get COVID. Yeah. And I was kind of thrown for a loop, but I was like, I need to come back to this. And I put it on Saturday. I was just starting on my day with coffee and breakfast and started watching it. And then uh, it's a, it's a slow burn. Mm -hmm. It is a, uh, great bunch of acting from the different people. I don't it's not an ensemble piece. Sure. But the the roles and just the you just you, nothing <coughs> excuse me that kind of like pulls you forward where you're like oh man, I am hooked on every scene, but you're just kind of drawn in by the acting. Sure. And just kind of like the uncertainty of where where things are going. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it I remember like whoa, wait. Okay, because I didn't know where the movie was going to go. Sure. I didn't know what the the big premise was. Mm -hmm. But if you've seen it, or when you see it, mm -hmm. I can't wait to have just a, a brief discussion about right, it, right. how that goes. Um, yeah, that's that's it for me, man. I haven't really done other... I mean, I'm not outside doing anything. Right. Um, I'm, I'm even cheating on Pokemon Go right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm gonna yeah, talk about, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think my it's my phone's over there doing it now. Yeah. Um, one of the things in Pokemon Go now, when you raid with people, uh, you see these like accolades. There's no no actual award that's tallied or kept. Sure. It just throws out some arbitrary. Yeah, you don't get any reward for it. You brought the biggest Pokemon. You had the final hit. Mm -hmm. You're the style savant. You're dressed to kill. Um, you have the most charge moves. So it'll like name three or four things. And one of the more recent, when they updated it, one of the things was uh, it calls out who walked the, f the farthest or furthest the day before. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Seeing like normally it's like somebody walked two k three. I mean it's December, January. Yeah. yeah, you're lucky to get that far. Yeah, and most of know. the time the people you're raiding with are you know regional at best, if not yeah. immediate vicinity. So I see a guy that the day before he had walked like seventy two kilometers, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> no, not not here because he lives in town. I'm yeah. like, Zach. Um, you doing laughs around your house or what, what happened? How'd you, how'd you do that? And he sends me a link to uh, this thing he got on Amazon that basically you put your phone in it and it mimics walking. 
So it just sits there and yeah, place and kind of swings back and forth. It's the it's the craziest thing. I I asked you the other day what it was and you showed it to me and and what it did. It looks like like you remember those you see in movies the ball like the oh yeah like where the, you the hit, businessman yeah, has one like, on, his, on his desk. It has like the five balls that hit yeah. back and forth. It looks kind of like that thing mm-hmm. or the uh, the water bird thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just a constant movement. Yeah. The, yep it's like a swing for your phone mm-hmm. um, so you, yeah you, you basically you, you assemble these arms and put your phone on it there's like a magnet mm-hmm. and when you plug it in it activates the other magnet so you just kind of pull it back right and the pendulum swings yeah when those magnets get close they're opposite current so it just keeps moving yeah. it away from it so i've been cheating on pokemon go so i can hatch my eggs right it's stupid cold out i'm not gonna even you know can't go walk around the block after right. dinner. Uh, so now I'm walking 20 to 30 <laughs> kilometers a day. <laughs> All my eggs are being incubated and That's I don't awesome. have to pay for extra. <laughs> if you're from Niantic and you're watching this, everything I said is lie. <laughs> I would never do something like that. Or um, just maybe come out with your own branded one, Niantic. It's a good idea. It yeah, so I'm a I'm a shut in. I I love that the days are getting a little longer, but other than that, yeah, I'm a keep to myself quiet. Not a not a Scrooge humbug, but just kind of I'm not coming out till it's warm again. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you, man. I totally feel that. Uh, you want to take a quick break? Yeah, and do some unboxing. Yep, you've got a couple things. Yeah, and then. Uh, We'll do some reviews after that. Sounds good. All right. Be right back. All right. Now we're back. We're going to do some unboxing. Yeah. Luke, you have two products. I do. The first one is the OnePlus Buds Z2 in Obsidian Black. Uh, These are wireless headphones. From OnePlus, we uh, we're fans of OnePlus here, in general. Yeah, phones and their you had a chance to play with their other earbuds, right? The uh, Z1. Mm-hmm. And let's see, in the box we got the case, and I'm imagining the buds are in there. And then let's just see what else we get in the case here. I'm imagining that's a charge cable is in here, and the uh, the one. Bo- one plus red. Yep, of course. Everything comes with that red. Yep. Now that that is a special kind of cable, though. Right. Everything they do is crazy fast charging. Yep. And even down to their earbuds, they charge much quicker than a lot of right uh, others do. And we got some uh, little quick start. Got some extra ear cups and just some warranty and safety info. info. Put all this away here. We don't really need that. And let's get into the buds. So these are a uh, have a stem on them, a stem style. It looks like you got an indicator on the case here of when it's charged. Uh, and uh, I can give you some immediate feedback on these. Yeah, they have fast pair. Oh, nice. As I'm recording, taking pictures here, the yeah. uh, it is asking my phone if it would like to pair with those right away. Nice. It looks like there's a there's a button on the back to see, uh, to check your charge mm-hmm. on them. Uh, it looks like it's only one LED indicator, though, so it must be green for, for good, and maybe it changes mm-hmm. as the charge wanes. Um, nice. Small stem, even though there is a stem style, it's pretty small. Mm-hmm. Um, these are glossy, kind of a glossy obsidian. Uh, I guess when you, you say obsidian, I was just thinking, you know, maybe it's more matte, like but, a flat. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's it is pretty glossy, shiny black, uh, with a little bit of like a brushed black on the very end. Um. These things are have a little bit of a magnetic 
nice little bite bite yeah when you uh, go to put them back in and there's some uh dimples here to be able to get them out easier we saw with what was it those diesel the ones diesel were hard they to were pull pretty out pretty hard to get them out uh, in the case, it's flat on the bottom for sitting flat, but it's nice and rounded. Doesn't seem like it's going to, and there's a little bit of a magnetic clasp to close it. So these aren't going to open in your bag or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and they're pretty low profile. It's a little bit bigger maybe than what I would be comfortable in my pocket. Right. Um, it's not terrible, but we've, once you find ones that are smaller, it's kind of hard to go back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these uh, USB-C charging, and uh, we have here some specs. These are I IP55, water and sweat resistant. So you're gonna be able to do some workout with them. You're gonna be able to, uh, if you get caught in the rain walking around, you're mm -hmm. not gonna have a problem with that. Uh, you're gonna be able to do kind of anything you wanna do with them. You know, you're not swimming with them or anything like that, but uh, they will, you know, get you around wherever you are. You'll be you'll be fine most of the time. Uh, they have a forty decibel active noise canceling. That's pretty so high. That's that's really high. Most of what we see is about twenty five, thirties. Yep. Yeah. Um. So forty. That that's that's a pretty quiet uh, enclosure for uh, listening to music or a podcast or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, these are Bluetooth 5.2, so mm -hmm. ultra, ultra low latency, um, should have no problem, you know, matching voice to, uh, speech to video and stuff. If you're yeah, watching if you're, that or gaming um, for gaming, reaction. yeah, you're not going to have much mm -hmm. lag on, you know, footsteps or, you know, things that matter like that. Um, 38 hours on a battery charge. That's quite a bit. I imagine that's probably just wireless without the noise canceling. If you have the active noise canceling, that might be less than that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this is first first blush kind of unboxing, yeah. first impressions. Right. Uh, I'm not sure exactly on that. I think they run um, like 99. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the price. Price point. So that is, um, you know, we've seen other earbuds that are, you know, $50 that are going right. to give a 24-hour mm -hmm. playback. Uh, so at a hundred, yeah. thirty-eight sounds pretty. Yeah. Well, and if you pair it with you know their fast, their quick charge mm -hmm. and fast charge capabilities, you know you're you're really going to have no problem at all. A few minutes um, is going to give you way more than you're going to need for right uh, a workout or mm -hmm. a commute. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So those are what are they called again? The OnePlus Buds Z. Uh, Z2 Z2 Pro okay. um right on yeah. uh the next thing we have is um sen sen si sen I, th I think it's sen 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 yeah but there's a g in the middle I sen know. sen I know I, I don't know. know what it is uh but this is a pet camera and treat dispenser yeah um yeah, interesting uh, idea. I love it. I love the idea. Have you ever had something like this? I have not. I've I've had some different ones that I've played with at home mm -hmm. that uh, they're pretty cool. If you've got a pet that's not afraid of things, things you know, right. sometimes they might spit out a, no, uh, a couple pieces, um, but they might have like a whine to them mm, or like a sure. gear sound. Right. So they may be a little apprehensive. Cats maybe a little skittish, but it's pretty cool to have as a camera, right? Uh, to kind of get first, you know, right at the ground level view of your dog or your cat, right? Um, I've got different friends and family that I've shown, you know, I'll be out to dinner and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I should uh, check on the pup. check out the dog, you know, and they're like, wait, what are you doing? And I'll show them, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna spit out a couple of treats, and they're like, let me do it, and they're yeah. like blown away and they just keep keep hitting the button that they can keep feeding like, all right stop yeah. stop giving treats to the Quit. Dog. yeah <laughs> yeah um okay so in the box you get you have the actual uh camera and treat dispenser and then you have a uh, user guide looks like a uh warranty registry 
and uh, two different um, attachments for uh, hanging it on the wall. If you want to hang it on the wall, um, I imagine that's probably the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Looks like that just snaps in and it just hangs, you know. And then yeah, I wonder can... if it, like the propulsion, how hard that'll be. Right. Um, so you got a power button, looks like, here on the side. Treats come down through here and probably mm -hmm. uh, get pushed out. And it looks like up top is where... Well, that's like a, a nice, like, rubber, kind of rubberized top piece. Nice and flexible. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to worry about, you know, maybe if the dog is, you know, knows what it is and taps it or something, doesn't get trying, scratches yeah. on it or something like that. Uh, and then in here, it looks like this is the power cord. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Doing awesome. Um yeah, the power cord. Uh, I don't know what these are. Some sort of probably cover for, oh, maybe it's a privacy cover for the light or the camera. Oh, uh, in yeah, case, could be. Uh, in case you don't want to use that feature and just use the treats. Uh, or if you don't want, you know, the privacy, you're paranoid about any sort of in-house privacy for or, any yeah. connected devices. Um, if they're hacked, if right. their, their database is breached or something, and people can access the camera. It looks like it plugs in here in the back, like this. It'd be and interesting it kind of to see it. fishes around. Yeah, and it has multiple angles of wherever you can fish out that cord, you know, whatever way you want to go, mm -hmm. depending on where your outlet's situated. Oh, yeah, so if it goes, you run over to the left side. Oh, yeah, or or maybe you can... You're mounting it. I don't think you would ever mount it sideways or anything like that, but pretty cool. Yeah. It kind of looks like they thought of everything on how to mount this. Um, there's a speaker in the front. Looks like a speaker housing mm -hmm. for uh, communicating with the pet. So now what this thing will do is you can check on the camera, mm -hmm. check, you know, see what's going on at the house, and then you can actually speak to the pet. So there's two way mic, right? So you can talk to it, um, and then you can also hear it. Uh, That's fun to play with. I yeah. would, I would be curious to see what you think of doing that. With so we have Sydney. We have Simply Safe okay. at home, and we have one of the cameras set up in the living room. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, she is she doesn't know where it comes from. So we've tried to do that, and you know, say mm -hmm. hi to her or something, and she'll you'll see her ears perk <laughs> up, and she looks around and thinking you're home yeah um and so we try and not do that too much because we don't want her to think that we're home and, and she then, can't find and you. then she can't find right. us right so it'll be interesting to see how you know maybe how this works as far as if we're giving her a treat out of it um you know if she kind of knows better or, mm -hmm. or learns kind of what it is and maybe isn't as confused when she hears our voice or maybe she thinks you're stuck inside of that right <laughs> she tries to get us out of it um but this will uh support up a 2.4 gig network and a 5g network which at home is a, a pretty big deal it's huge when you're trying to pair cameras yes uh and security and different things to your network yes if you don't know how to kind of control those settings mm -hmm. it can kind of be a pain in the butt to plug something in that should just pair and go mm -hmm. that your router might only be broadcasting in 5g yep you have to turn that off because it needs to be 2.4 or a lot of times if it's connected with an app mm -hmm. it uses whatever wi-fi your phone is connected to mm -hmm. and most of the time like through my house i'm using the 5g connection on my router but a lot of things up until recently have still just been two two point four yep. gigahertz network because that's cheaper technology because it's older. Um, they and then you have to change your Wi Fi on your phone to be able to get this to pair. And then sometimes and if your phone keeps trying to default back, right? Yep. Um, so that's a nice selling this, feature. Yeah, that's a huge that's a huge deal. Um, the other thing here is it'll hold. I'm looking at. Yeah, it's got a, a 16 gigabyte flash card to hold uh, the 36 most recent videos. Mm -hmm. um, 
And this is a 1080p camera with a 130 degree field of view and uh, a two-way microphone. It looks like it's coming in right uh, like 110 bucks. Okay. Um, that that doesn't seem bad at all for these. I, I don't mm. have a a huge um, you know knowledge base for it, but sure. it looks like it's well built. I like you know the ideas of having uh, a thought out way to run your cord for it. Yeah. So it does lay flat on the wall. Um, I like that they included, you know, some kind of mounting bracket template Yep. for you. So you don't have to worry about getting, um, you don't have to put screws in the wall. You don't have to worry about measuring it correctly for it to lay flat or anything like that. You just, it looks like these are peel and stick. You just peel off the back, oh, yeah. stick it, and then you just hang it. Um, so that's yeah, really Yeah, because nice. even full of treats, it's not going to be it's that It's not going to be super heavy, no. Unless, Unless you're feeding your dog lead. <laughs> but you probably shouldn't do that. Probably, yeah. Yeah, please don't do that. Um, it says here in the book that those are considered shading stickers. Oh, so okay. I'm imagining some kind of assistance, like if uh, you're trying to see what the camera sees. Is it semi-transparent? Um, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, this is. I don't know. I'll be curious. Uh. Take this home. Yeah. See what see what uh see what Sydney thinks of it. Yeah. And then uh we'll put that in the review. Yeah. Is uh what you think of it. Yep. Uh and this is just the unboxing and kind of first first uh impressions. First look, yeah. So uh if you are familiar with this brand, tell us how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Is uh Senjusen Sen Yeah. Mm. Sen 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 Yeah, C E N G Sen Sen. Who knows? Yeah, but uh, I'm excited to try it. And it looks like so far, it looks like it's a quality made product. Uh, and yeah, we'll keep you posted on that. All right, that's all I have for unboxing today. Cool. Um, we'll take another break. Yeah, we'll come back and we will do a couple of reviews. I've got a few things to kind of bring you up to speed on that I've spent time with. Sounds good. All right, thanks. All right. Welcome back, Luke. Hey. Uh, my turn. Yeah. I've got two reviews for you. Cool. These are things that uh, we've unboxed recently. Yeah. Took home, spent some time with, and uh, ready to score. Cool. So uh, I've got two. I'll let you pick which one we go first. Mm. Got some earbuds. Yep. And we've got a food station. Oh, right. Yeah. Let's go with the earbuds first. All right. So this is the PAMU or the PadMate is the mm -hmm. brand the z1 pro uh, these are earbuds that uh, they're available in three colors they don't quite have the tiny little earbud piece but mm -hmm. they're not quite a stem there's right. just a little bit that comes off of it right. almost like um like a basset hound ear kind of thing yeah tiny. It, it, it almost looks like the old like uh jabra bluetooth that would stick mm -hmm. out from your ear yeah a little bit, but it's not that long. It's They're like not, a yeah. little short little. Yep. And they just, just something to kind of control, something mm -hmm. that you can touch. So, uh, spoiler alert, I like these quite a bit. Cool. They're very nice. Uh, my wife is constantly on the look for earbuds. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm bringing home different things that I'll unbox, uh, things that I'll review and things that I've spent time with. And then we'll just kind of find their way through the family. Sure. So she was really quick to kind of, hey, um, when you're done with these, I'd like to have yeah. them. So yeah. that's kind of what they've become pretty right. quickly. Cool. Uh, so these come in three colors. There's a black with like a little bit of a gray accent. There's a white with a gray accent. Mm -hmm. And then there's a green with a yellow accent, which mm. is kind of like, um, kind of like a Green Bay Packer kind of green and yellow. Sure. Uh, I, they're not super fashionable at that color. I don't uh -huh. know how they arrived there and not any other color scheme. Right. But the uh, black and gray or the white and gray, they look nice. They yeah. look modern. They look almost kind of like something you might expect to see Google do. Uh-huh. Kind of similar to like their earbuds. Yep. Um, and just the, the design language. Yep. Uh, so they have an app that let you 
customize the equalizer if you're listening to different genre of music. Oh, nice. So there's the normal mode, but then there's also uh, vocal if you're doing for like podcasts and audio books. Uh-huh. Then you've also got uh, pop, jazz, rock, and one other one, uh, classical. Oh, nice. So depending on your music, you could kind of adjust that and then it will change the equalizer so it will bring out and emphasize certain things in that kind of... Do you notice much difference? A little bit. Okay. Uh, Some more than others. I mean, if you're swinging from vocal to pop. Sure. You know, but if you're going from like jazz to classical, you might not pick that up as much. Okay. Um, Not every headphone earbud give you these options. Right, yeah. Usually it's just kind of you get what you get yep kind of thing so that might nice... be able to boost the bass and that's about it yeah or uh yeah at at best right so uh i like the fact that it comes with that uh you're gonna get about six hours of playback mm-hmm. per charge with active noise canceling okay which is pretty good yep that is the feature that tends to kind of use battery more than other things sure you know volume level but active noise canceling kind of does more work Mm -hmm. so six hours with that on there i believe with the carrying case you get another three okay so you're getting a total of 24 hours per charge and if you think about a daily commute to work or school you know across campus and back you might be an hour or two you know at 24 hours per charge you might be charging this thing maybe once every other week or so Mm -hmm. so that's pretty impressive yeah um there's an active noise cancellation option if you want to listen to it you don't have to mm-hmm. and then there's also like a transparency mode oh which kind of gives you like an ambient listening so you can still hear mm-hmm. kind of like what's going on out there mm-hmm. so your mileage will vary based off of how long you listen to what volume levels you listen sure and what settings you have but uh yeah, so the main reason my wife likes these is because they come with multiple ear tip sizes. Yeah. Not everything comes with that. Right. Uh, a lot of the budget earphones come with that one default size. Mm-hmm. These come with, like, I believe they're probably small, medium, large, and extra large. Mm-hmm. She found them to be very, very comfortable, myself included. Uh, I tend to fit pretty well with what comes out of the box the with a, standard yeah yeah so i don't have to size up or down mm-hmm. she has a little bit smaller you know mm-hmm. ear so for her she looks for something that she can put a smaller tip on right so these come with that and she recognized very quickly yeah these feel good they don't feel like they're heavy they're not going to fall out nice um sometimes with stem mm-hmm. for her what she finds is they feel like they're just bigger than they truly are and they feel like they might be top heavy yeah so she says you know these are very comfortable and i of course agree right she was just uh she's my second opinion here right well and she she has a little bit more of a uh a discerning Mm -hmm. uh sense of what she wants yeah you know we've we've seen so many earbuds and we kind of know what we're in for yeah um we can grab the $25 pair, $30 pair, and know they're going to be okay to walk, to mow the grass yeah. or sit around the pool and read or something. But then there's the $150, $200 pair that I'm really going to enjoy this album. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to music that I enjoy, and I want that premium audio sound. Sure. This is a great kind of hybrid of yeah. those. Gives you kind of like the best of both worlds. Nice. Uh, so for me, for scoring these, let me yeah. pull that up. I have... Um, product reviews. I scored them pretty well. Yeah. These are, and you might want to calculate for me to give you an average. Sure can. But you can see here I've got fours on pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, that's included in the audio quality, the build, the warranty is a standard 12 month warranty. Setup is nice and easy. General performance, all fours, except features and functions. I gave a 4.5. Yeah. Because it has the extra ear tips, mm-hmm. because it has the, um, Three modes of active noise canceling. Yeah. And because it has the equalizer settings in the app. So I gave it a little bit above that. Uh, so I know it's probably like 4.12 or 4.07. Yeah. Okay. So not my math's not too bad. Yeah. Um, so that puts it technically, we would consider that an editor's choice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because it's a four and above. So if you are looking for nice earbuds, mm-hmm. if you're looking for something that isn't you're not you're not quite ready to commit to the two hundred dollar price, 
$150. There is something to be said about buying that mm -hmm. and kind of owning that for years. Right. But if you're like, hey, I'm just looking for something that's nice, that isn't going to break the bank, but it's going to come with quite a few features, that would be the PAMU Z1 Pro earbuds. Right. Yeah. And they're, like you said, they're 100 bucks. Yep. $99. So those are sweet. Yeah. Um, that's that's a brand that I wasn't very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but seeing them before you took them home, seeing them here around the office, they looked very nice. Mm hmm. Um, and we've had some other guys on the team review the mm -hmm. brand and the same thing. It's kind of like that. Oh, I, I've never really heard of them, but I think I'm going to start paying more attention to them yep. down the road. Yep. Um, well, that's awesome. What mm -hmm. your, your next one. So your next review is the, uh, food, food station. station. Yes. yes. This Go is for it. Gourmia mm -hmm. food station. It's a five in one. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, this is basically, it's almost like having a, suitcase on your counter yeah kind of footprint yeah so it's a little wide uh fits on a countertop maybe rises you know about the highest water bottle with the lid so you're looking at probably eight ten inches yeah it's like a it's almost like the the largest george foreman yeah. size that or or maybe a uh a, a wider crock pot but not mm -hmm. as not as deep kind of just flattened yeah yeah so it's a five in one, mm -hmm. which means it does five functions. Yeah. Two of them were the most appealing to me. One being it's an air fryer. Yes. Now, most air fryers we have tend to be the round cylinder. Yeah. Pull out the front, you know, mm -hmm. drop the stuff in. This one comes with a basket that you kind of load top down in. So you lift the lid. Mm -hmm. It's a glass lid mm -hmm. that you can see when things are uh, baking or air frying, mm -hmm. grilling. Um I've spoiled a couple of the five-in-one mm -hmm. features there. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can take the lid up, and you can actually remove it so you can wash that. It's dishwasher safe. Nice. The basket comes out, holds six quarts. And then the other option to put in there is like a grill plate. Yeah. So you can actually put something in there if you want to grill food. Mm. So it doesn't didn't feel like it was too big. Yeah. I took it home. I mean, it's kind of like an all-in-one printer yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, set that down. Yeah. Um, I kind of realized the differences between that and a traditional air fryer uh -huh. where you know, at a hundred dollars, I think that's what this runs right now. Yeah. It, um, it's very good at kind of doing all these things, uh -huh. but in terms of like the digital display and the functions features that sometimes you get with a little bit of a higher end air fryer, mm -hmm. you don't quite get here. Okay. In the more specifically, um, Hey, I'm heating up uh, chicken or I'm doing something specific that, you know, French fries. Some of the more modern air fryers, you can just kind of hit the French fry button and shut that. And it knows the temperature and the time to do that. Sure. Here, you kind of have to know a little you bit. You got to dial in your settings a little mm -hmm. better. Sure. But that's really the only kind of drawback that I was, I realized after a week or so, I'm like, I uh, kind of miss. Mm -hmm. being able to do that so, yeah it's a little more set it and forget it with a <coughs> uh specialized piece of appliance yeah but as the five in one features we've been able to use probably three mm -hmm. four of them mm -hmm. we haven't done the dehydration yet okay um but that is one of the other ones so this i'm looking at target which is where you can currently get that you're looking at about 150 for this guy um Five features. This will do grilling, mm -hmm. air fry, bake, roast, and dehydrate. Okay. So we've kind of thrown a I, I went home, yeah, sat on put the it counter, through its paces a little and bit. And we used it for probably three or four nights straight. Okay. And like the first night was we grilled salmon. And then we air fried um some breaded shrimp. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we threw in some French fries, reheat and so it works very well at all those. Mm -hmm. It will preheat mm -hmm. and then ask you to add the food. Okay. Whereas a lot of times with air fryers, you just put your food in and hit start. Hit start. Yeah. So that's something to kind of keep in mind, okay. but it will prompt you when it's warm enough. Okay. It will grill up to 510 degrees, which if you don't know what that means, it's really hot. Yeah. If you're 
you know, we did salmon and you have to get it to 165 degrees inside. Mm -hmm. So we had it in there and you can watch it grill and it'll give you the grill marks and everything. It will sear that. Yeah. Uh, we stuck a meat thermometer during thermometer in there and found that, I mean, it cooked it evenly. Yeah. Has a technology, I forget what they call it, but it's designed to kind of heat evenly from all around. Uh huh. Um, is it so? This is supposed to be like a smokeless grill. How yeah. how did that work for you? It works pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I tried to do bacon. Uh huh. After and uh, I will tell you a little bit about that. The book does come with some recommendations for certain things. Okay. So I know bacon was in there. Yeah. But I thought if I make bacon in the oven. I'm usually putting it at like 425, 450, and I'm going to set it for 12, 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not big enough to really make a full like cooking sheet mm -hmm. of bacon. So mm -hmm. I, I laid like five strips in there. Mm -hmm. I had already cooked dinner with it and was working on it. And then it came up with an E5 air. Oh. So I looked it up, basically said that the inside had become a little bit too hot. Oh. And it says if it gets to like 700 degrees or so inside. So I'm not quite sure how it got that hot. Sure. And I don't know if it was because I had foil down to uh -huh. catch the grease. There is a tray that slides out. Okay. So if you're cooking. Like a grease tray. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. If you're cooking food that is grilling or an air fryer. And sometimes, you know, if you throw like uh, pizza rolls in there, you're going to get the crumbs that fall mm -hmm. off. This will catch those. Mm -hmm. So you can pull the basket out, but you can also pull the tray out. Mm -hmm. And all of those are dishwasher safe. Nice. Uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool unit. Yeah. It does take up a decent amount of space. Whereas we're kind of used to that round cylinder in the corner of our cabinet. Sure. We just kind of, you know, out of the way on our counter right here, it's kind of prominent, but we put it there deliberately to right. kind of kick the tires. Right. So we wanted to see how often we used it as opposed to the stove. Mm -hmm. And we did, uh, or the oven, I should say. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a great, pretty nice little uh, all in one device. Nice. Gourmia has a whole range of kitchen products, yeah, and accessories. And I was excited to try this one out, and I think they've got another good one. Yeah, um, there's a couple things that if you're like, oh, I kind of miss this about an air fryer. They have some amazing air fryers that sure. have all of those features. Sure, but if you're looking for something like, hey, I, you know, a lot of college kids. I don't know if they're allowed to yeah. have air fryers. Or if you're, or, you know, a smaller efficiency apartment or something. Yeah. You can kind of do a lot more with just one one device. Yeah. If, one appliance. If you have, uh, you know, like, my dad. Mm -hmm. Somebody lives on their own. They can cook more than enough food in there. We did peppers and onions in there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're, you're flipping the sausages over and you're getting the grill marks. You're cooking the, you know, and it comes out nice. And you get very little of that smoke. Yeah. So there is on the lid, there's a hole. Yeah. That um, it allows heat and smoke to kind of escape, but it does not, nothing that I've done has made it to kind of pour out of there. Sure. It's sat next to the microwave and we have the vent. So we'll turn that on yeah. if we're cooking yep. to draw things. Yep. Never had to do that. Nice. So that, um, whatever technology they call that. Yeah seems to work so far uh sound the, the only other thing that i was wondering is sound wise how loud is it when it's running it's not too bad yeah i noticed that depending on how it sat on my counter once in a while it would like kick in like a higher gear it would start to kind of like vibrate mm -hmm. but it because the counter i can tell you is not 100 percent flat sure all i had to do was just kind of like move it and it stopped vibrating gotcha but other than that there's it's no louder than an air fryer yeah it's it's a nice, quiet kitchen appliance. Nice. So I, I scored this pretty well. I don't yeah. know the overall score here, but you can see I gave it fours uh, for pretty much setup, performance, price, warranty, build. Mm -hmm. I gave it a three and a half over features and functions. And I know that sounds a little different for something that's a five in one, mm -hmm. but I would have appreciated the display and maybe some shortcut buttons. Right. It is nice and easy to turn on grill and to say, Hey, I'm going to just set this to, you know, there's four grill settings and you'll see the temperature and you can just tap through those. Or if you hit bake, you can just every five degrees and you can set your time. 
you're cooking and you realize it's going to be another couple of minutes, you can hit arrow up and it'll add another two minutes. Mm -hmm. So it does have some of that capability. I might have appreciated a couple of preset options. Sure. Just for some things that people tend to reheat fries or yeah. reheat uh, something or cooking chicken or just something where it just here's four presets. Or yeah, something. yeah. I don't expect it to be at that price point tied to an app or cook, uh, connected to Google or something like right, that. Right, right. Uh, but Gourmia does make some products that do that. Yeah. If you're looking, they have a little bit more niche uh, type of thing. So. so your overall score is a 3.92. So it's real good. Yep. So I would definitely recommend it. I, I think that it's a good product, uh, easy to use, mm -hmm. easy to clean. It's a great uh, bachelor gift idea. Sure. You know I mean, we're beyond Christmas, the holiday gift giving, but if you have somebody who just got their first apartment or somebody that's moving out, this is the kind of thing that they will probably use a lot. Yeah. Especially if they don't have an air fryer and have it started to kind of add to their kitchen appliances. Nice. That's the Gourmia Food Station 5-in-1. Sweet. That's it for me, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess with that, that's, that's kind of this episode. Yeah. That's... Trying out a little segments. little new format, mm -hmm. testing the waters, kind of playing around with what works here. Yep. I think it works well. I do too. All right, guys. We'll see you. <laughs>